For you, the day the live-action Street Fighter Grace Theaters was the day your dream of seeing an amazing video game adaptation died. But for me... It was Tuesday. Well, okay, actually it was Friday, December 23rd, 1994 to be precise, a date that will live in infamy among fans of Capcom's fighting game franchise. I know you like to look at yourself on television, you sick son of a bitch. So look at this. <laughs> but despite the American movie's failure, that very same year, Japanese audiences were treated to an amazing anime adaptation of Street Fighter II. That set a new high bar for game movies in what seemed like their darkest hour. So why did the movie bomb so hard while the anime is still awesome to this day? I'm Andrew, you're watching Cutscene, and this is a tale of two Street Fighters. Besides the obvious contrast between flesh and blood and pen and ink, there are some fundamental differences between the two films. First and foremost, the live-action Street Fighter is completely the wrong genre. The live-action Street Fighter was written and directed by Steven D'Souza, the screenwriter behind legendary action flicks like Die Hard and 48 Hours. Now that's one hell of a resume, but D'Souza never really had the chops to make a proper martial arts movie. So he didn't even try. I guess you didn't see that, did you? Instead, he pitched his vision of Street Fighter as a militaristic action romp in the vein of James Bond. Uh-huh. So instead of a globetrotting tournament to determine the world's best martial artist, we get a ragtag group of soldiers teaming up to take down an evil dictator using lots and lots of guns. A lame boat that we're supposed to be really impressed with, and a bare minimum of actual street fighting. You know, the thing that we wanted to go see in the theater? The thing that the game is about? Street fighting? You're all under arrest. Surprisingly, Capcom was actually cool with him turning their franchise into G.I. Joe, because the game developer was literally trying to do the exact same thing themselves. They had inked a deal with toy maker Hasbro the year before, who were looking to revitalize their G.I. Joe line by rebranding it with Street Fighter characters. What's a Dawson? Oh! Both companies were gung-ho to add tanks and toyetic accessories to their franchise about bare-knuckle brawlers, resulting in a Street Fighter movie with barely any one-on-one -on -one bouts. Now, the anime takes a lot of liberties with the plot, too. For example, there's still no sign of the World Warrior Tournament that's the backdrop for the game. Instead, M. Bison is using cyborgs to scour the world for top-tier martial artists that he can brainwash into his own personal assassins. It's a fairly flimsy premise, but it's a great framework to showcase some incredible fights. There's still plenty of intrigue, espionage, and life and death stakes as Guile and Chun Li team up to take down the shadowy crime lord. But the bulk of the narrative is the bond between Ryu and Ken. They're the focus, as they absolutely should be, because the live action film suffers from too many characters. One of Capcom's original demands was that every fighter from the game, including the four new challengers from Super Street Fighter 2, had to be included in the movie. The script was constantly being rewritten to incorporate them, hastily throwing in characters simply because the suits said that they had to be there. It didn't matter what role they played in the lore or why, that's why Balrog, the evil prize-fighting boxer, is now a TV producer, and why DJ, the happy-go-lucky Jamaican kickboxing champ, was turned into a wimpy computer geek working for the bad guys. That's great news, General. Congratulations. On the contrary, I mourn. Okay. It suffers from, like, this serious 90s like, ick, where people were just doing like weird shit because they were trying to hit a whole bunch of niches. We need a hacker. Yeah, we need, it's the 90s, we gotta have a hacker. Unbelievable. There is time only for people. A hacker. Between the convoluted origin for Blanca, Sagat as a suit wearing henchman, and E Honda as a Hawaiian cameraman, there's just not enough time to make any single character special. It's a classic case of too many cooks in the kitchen, which is a bummer because there's seriously some great casting here. You have made me a happy man. Next, I'll make you a dead one. Yeah! <laughs> Ming-Na Wen absolutely kills it as Chun-Li, and Raul Julia's final performance as Bison is better than the movie deserves. He absolutely steals the show. And by the way, 
Homie's Puerto Rican. Something wrong, Colonel. You come here prepared to fight a madman, and instead you found a god? Perfect. The biggest casualties of the live action transition are Ryu and Ken, who are transformed from the heart and soul of the Street Fighter franchise into a pair of con men trying to sell Nerf guns to terrorists. Yes, that's what happened in the board meeting. That's what they decided on. That Ryu and Ken, Shotokan masters, are con men now. Perfect. Above everything else, Street Fighter is supposed to be Ryu's story as he travels the globe looking to hone his skills against the toughest fighters in the world. Something the anime captures perfectly, even though it's also really packed full of characters. In fact, it actually has more, since Fei Long didn't make the cut in live action. Oh, that's Brian Cranston? Yes. Brian Cranston plays Fei Long? <laughs> yeah, listen. So long. See you again, my friend. Sure, some of the world warriors are haphazardly thrown in, like how Zangief and Blanca have a fight scene because, well, because they're street fighters and that's what they do. T-Hawk and Cammy show up for a hot second and split, and Akuma is a blink and you'll miss him cameo, but he's there and it works, because with an anime, you don't really have to justify why they exist. There's no need to explain the origin of a green electro monster from Brazil or how a sumo wrestler pays the bills in the off season. They just have to show up look awesome, and fight. Speaking of which, the animated battles blow away the movie's awful action. The live action Street Fighter was a rushed, chaotic, and stressful experience for damn near everyone involved. In light of the aforementioned Hasbro deal, Capcom was insistent that the film met its targeted release date, but Raul Julia was suffering from the effects of stomach cancer and needed time to recuperate before he could film his dialogue scenes. As a result, the crew was forced to film all of the fights first, without the months they had planned for elaborate fight choreography. People were basically figuring their shit out moments before the camera rolled, or just winging it and hoping for the best. The crunch also resulted in the removal of what makes Street Fighter so awesome, the special moves. The special moves. There was no time to come up with the elaborate staging and special effects needed to pull them off, which is why the one Hadouken we see is literally just a white flash frame. The flash kicks and the thousand hand slaps were equally unimpressive, but the anime treated the special moves like they were actually special. Instead of Hadoukens being something you mindlessly spam to whittle down your brother while he's just crouching in the back and he, he, he thinks he's so much better than you, but oh, but oh, look, you're over here now and I got nine Hadoukens and you don't know how to jump block, idiot. It's all about zoning. That's Street Fighter 101. The anime turns them into an earth-shattering blast that makes a Kamehameha seem like a sneeze in comparison. Don't at me. Shoryuken's spinning bird kicks and sonic booms become devastating fight-ending finishers, but even without the fireballs and fancy moves, the fights have a real sense of weight and authenticity. Because they were choreographed by real-life MMA legends Kazuyoshi Ishii and Andy Hook. The D'Souza movie had no chance of matching the intensity of Ryu and Sagat or the raw brutality of the Chun-Li Vegas scene. Honestly, even if you made a live-action Street Fighter movie today, I don't think it could touch the awesomeness of the anime. They even had another chance with The Legend of Chun-Li, and they blew it then too. Maybe it's because animation is inherently more suited to adapt the hybrid turbo action of the Legendary series. Or it could be that the American producers simply misunderstood what has always been a fundamentally Japanese franchise. Look. I'll always appreciate Street Fighter for its campy charm and the sheer audacity of its existence, but I'm not going to put down my fight stick to watch it anytime soon. The Street Fighter 2 anime went on to inspire the entire series of alpha games, some of the best fighting games I've ever played, and stands tall as one of the best video game adaptations ever. Yes, I said it. While Street Fighter the live action movie is yet just another cautionary tale of why Hollywood and Hadoukens just don't mix. Things can't get worse. Uh, 
I was wrong, it got worse. Thanks for watching everyone. Street Fighter 2 is literally the first video game I ever owned and played, so I had high hopes for the movie when I first saw it. What do you think is the best Street Fighter media? The anime, the Udon comics, or do you just stick to the games? Let me know in the comments. Please subscribe to Now This Nerd, and remember that you must defeat Shang Long to stand a chance.